How's it going everybody? Uh, in this video I'm going to be talking to you about how to use a model file to more accurately simulate your circuits. Uh, what I mean by that is in lab 2 we're going to physically be using the LM741 op amp. That's a pretty common op amp. Uh, and in our simulations we can go ahead and grab a generic op amp but the chances of that actually accurately describing what we're going to be testing in lab uh, physically is probably not very good. So it turns out that a lot of companies uh, make SPICE models for their circuits uh, for just knowing that people are going to be using them to simulate uh, in LT SPICE. So what we need to do is get our hands on a model file and I actually already have one and I'll make it available to you on Polylearn. So then we need to put that in the same directory as we're going to be working in. So I'm working in my lab2 directory uh, and the name of the file is UA741 uh, that's for op amp LM741 and the way I get that into my uh, SPICE is to click the .op and that's a SPICE directive that tells SPICE to do something. So .include should be pretty straightforward. Include this document UA741.txt. I'm just going to kind of place that right here. The next thing I need to do is actually place an op amp in and make it my 741. So if I press F2 it'll bring me up with the component selector and I can do op amp. Now if you do this op amp 1, this guy right here, um, that's just generic and that's not going to give us exactly what we want. So it turns out we need this op amp 2, which knows the only difference is it actually gives us power rails, uh, which for any practical op amp we actually need to run. So I'm going to go ahead and place that down on my schematic. And right now I have a generic op amp 2. I'm not even sure if it would let me run a simulation with this. But the first thing I want to do is I want to change this and it's going to be UA741. Uh, it actually does not match the name of this file. It just it happens that it does in this case, but it does not need to match the name of this file. It actually needs to match the name of, if we open this text file up, it needs to match the name of this, this sub-circuit, UA741. And this is pretty similar to the diode model. In fact, if you look down here, there are some diode models that we saw that are very similar to ones um, from Lab 1. So in any case, once we have this in LT Spice and we've renamed our op amp here, we can go ahead and start constructing our circuit. So I'll zoom out a bit. Uh, I need a couple voltage sources, and these are going to be my power rails. So I'll put one there and one there. And for this simulation, I'll be running this power rail, uh, this op amp at plus minus 15 volts. So I'll go ahead and hook this up, and let's see. So notice my ground's in the middle here. Uh, and if I label these nodes, I'm going to label one node VDD for my positive power rail. And I'm going to attach that to the op amp right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and label the other one VEE for my negative power rail. I'm going to attach that to the back, the negative side of the op amp. And then for each of these, I want 15 volts DC power. And that's what you'll be supplying from your bench. So then for this, I'm actually going to be building the first circuit in the lab manual. And that is the inverting amplifier. So I need a couple of resistors here. There's my in, uh, RA. Here's my RB. And I'm going to go ahead and link these up in my circuit. So I'll link that up there. This here. And let's see, I need a voltage source. That's my, going to be my input source. I need a couple grounds here. And that should look exactly like, and just for, so we're aware of what we're talking about, I'll rename the resistors RA, rename them RB, then go ahead and move this out of the way. Okay, so now we need to give them a value. So if we right click on the resistor, we can give, um, give the resistor a value. Right now, I'll just start with a 50K RB. And then for RA, it specifies as 10K, so I'll start with that. And then what else do we need here? So in order to see the gain of this op amp, which is actually what we're going to be looking at, uh, is we need to do a AC sweep. And what that's going to do is it's going to simulate, it's going to run this source, and it's going to test the gain at the output, output node, which is going to be right here. So we need an AC analysis. Uh, type of sweep, decade is good for us. So number of points per decade, I usually start at 100. Uh, start frequency will start really low at just 1 hertz. You actually can't do 0 hertz, so just be aware of that. And stop frequency, uh, I don't know, well, let's just do 1 meg, uh, and we'll see where that gets us. Okay, so it gives me an error, and this error is because you actually need to label a source. So if I go in here and I label this source as AC1, that's required. You have to actually type in AC1, uh, and I'll change the name of the input to VN. So now if I try it again, Okay, so if I click simulate, it should simulate now. And if I click the output node, notice this simulation window. Okay, so what do we have here? So it looks like at low frequencies all the way up to about, oh, I don't know, 70, 80 kilohertz, 
we get 14 dB. And what is that? Well, if we do the math and we actually crank through the numbers here, uh, we should find out that 20 log of RB over RA is equal to 14 dB. And sure enough, we can probably test that this amplifier is actually working by changing our B. So I'm going to go ahead and double the value of our B, put it to 100. And what do we see? So now we go up to 20 dB again. All right, so that's what we expect. And that's pretty much all we need to know about how to include this dot model file. And in the uh, next video, I'll talk about a little bit more on simulating these circuits and what kind of things we can do with them.